So there goes the church warden, Richard Bell. This chapel, um, which we wondered if we could just have a little rest here, which we are doing. So this was our tent pitch for the night. Nothing but Brett off a mirror. And that is our view. Michelle and I are ready to go. We got our new boots. These boots are made for walking. How do we feel this morning, Michelle? Yeah, not too bad this morning. It's not too cold. It's a bit cold. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm ready for it. Yeah, I think. I think we're feeling fairly strong, and it's meant to be a nice day. So we sh we're hoping to get to close to Middleton upon Teesdale today, and uh, more of the Pennine Way, and hopefully the Pennine Way will get better. It, it hasn't been my favourite walk uh, so far. Is there any bits of the Pennine we've enjoyed really? I mean, visibly, visually. Well, visually, it's, some of it's very nice. The views are nice, but then you can get the views just as nice. This is a beautiful view. I liked walking along the train track. That was a nice yeah, vista. Yeah, and that wasn't the Pennine Way. So, no, I, I would say no. There's no real highlights to me for the Pennine Way at the moment. I, I wouldn't say, yeah, views anywhere along the road are good, but the Pennine Way itself has just been a boggy mess, and it's cost us uh, uh, $200 on, on wet, wet, wet weather gear. So, anyway, onwards and off. more of the same more of the same as yesterday just bog and stinging nettles and uh god <laughs> sort of ways through but a bit after fortish very Poorly maintained, very poorly maintained section of walk this. Um, considering again, that these are some of the, the big national walks. And we're not actually on the Pennine Way now, we're on, I think it's called the South Tyne. No, I'm not sure what the name of this walk is, but it, it runs parallel with the Pennine Way, which is down by the waterside. Um, but the Pennine Way back behind us was exactly the same as this. Just awful. Uh, awfully maintained. There's a little rest stop if anyone needs a bed. <laughs> and you can see people walk it. It's, uh, it's a modestly well-trodden path. But for some reason, there's a big eagle going off in the... They're definitely an eagle, I think, there. Um, just for some reason, the, the pathways and the, the gateways and stars are really poorly maintained. I was saying to Michelle this morning, I don't think there's a section of the Pennine Way so far that I could remark on as being worth a visit uh, or enjoyable in any way. Um, now hikes should also be not about just always looking down to see what you're standing on and where you might slip but also to look around at the beauty that's up here but because it is so boggy and nettly and overgrown and rocky you're rarely able to, to enjoy the walk, even with the proper wet weather gear on as we have now. Anyway, it's my grumble for the morning. I actually feel quite good this morning. So, um, there is that. Look at that fence that's just fallen away completely. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think from what I've, we've done a lot of the big hikes of Britain and so far I wouldn't say Britain has particularly got anything to be proud about as far as the quality of their hikes. The quality of their country is gorgeous, it's beautiful and second to none really, but the quality of the maintenance of the walkways are uh, just very poor in my opinion. I mean, look what we're coming up to, to now. You can see, you can hear water running. 
you can see the other parts of the world there'll be a little bridge here. I bet there isn't. I bet we've got to go wading. So no, no actual water, fortunately. So I can hear water running quite hard. And there is a little bridge, I take it back. Look, everybody, a bridge across a little estuary goes down to the Tyne. But how well is it maintained? Let's see. Get the stingers out the way. You wouldn't want to risk your child's life on it, would you? <laughs> I've seen better maintained bridges in deepest... Oh. oh, see? I've seen better maintained bridges in deepest Southeast Asia that <laughs> I'd be more trusting of. I managed to put a please shut the gate on there, I see. But that is completely rotten. And that isn't rotten for this year. That's been rotten for several years. And nobody's bothered to maintain it. So, I feel like this is the, the most moanful of adventures. But you've got to take it as it is, right? Because people might want to do this in our manner with, with big packs on and wild camp and enjoy the countryside. Well, if you do that, you're gonna to have to carry some gear as Michelle and I are, and you're going to have to know what you're up against. A lot of this walkway is not designed. Let's pause and just take in the beauty because it is beautiful. But a lot of this walkway is not designed for people with packs or even for long distance hiking in my opinion. What have you found? Something nice? Oh, yeah, delightful. What, what is it? A little stream, bubbling stream. Bubbling. A bubbling stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, look how deep that's going to be. Um, it's not possibly too bad. Thanks. Get there's some rocks here. Look, there's another rock there. Um, this is going to get a bit mucky here. I thought you were close behind me. I know. Do you want to come along? Just, just tread it out as you come, Michelle. Well, I think I'm get but this, there is so much of this on the Pennine Way. So much of this. You can actually go down, Michelle. There is a, yeah. there is a, uh, a hillside. People have actually cut a new route uh, down on the base there. So I think Michelle should do that because. With the, with, with the extra weight of the backpacks, you've got another sort of 15 to 18 kilos on your back. That also pulls you down into the swamps where a, a sort of un... Somebody with, <laughs> what's the word? An unburdened walker could probably cope a lot easier. There is a way, there's always a way. There's always a way around, even in our sandals, we always found a way around these watery bogs. The problem why we changed, decided to stop doing it in sandals, was the time it took to keep considering the alternate routes rather than just walking through the water. So I would say our sandals did phenomenally well. They're hanging off our bags now. And if we don't uh, continue to use them, we'll post them 
back, but um, I would say they did phenomenally well. The problem we had with sandals was that with so much of the way so deep in water and bog and mud that we had to constantly negotiate different routes to what you could have taken if you were wearing sort of wet shoes. So hence, Britain is not the best um, country to walk in uh, hiking sandals. That's for sure, certainly um, from our experience. You see again, what do you do? If you were in sandals here, I'll show you an example. So if you were in sandals, I'll get Michelle to hold the camera and I'll show you the way you'd go. Now I could walk straight through the mud here, but in sandals, um, you would come up onto the top, the high land here, and you would step to that stone and to here, and you'd be, and you'd be completely dry. So it can be done in sandals. Come across through the mud, Michelle. His lucky GoPros are waterproof, isn't it? So yeah, you can see, you can get across in sandals. In almost every ford that we've come to has been crossable, but it means you have to pause and think and it slows you down. And that in itself became tiresome because coming up again, another mud puddle. And the Pennine Way so far has been mud and puddles every sort of 50 feet for about, you know, five days now. So, you know, would I recommend hiking in sandals? Absolutely, uh, proper hiking sandals, because we got no blisters. Um, we got uh, really comfortable footwear, very comfortable to wear. I don't ever get cold feet. My showers were cold occasionally, but nothing um, outstanding. It feels like your feet are breathing. It feels healthier. When you take your socks off, your feet are sort of soft and, you know, a bit wimpy. When you take your sandals off, your feet are solid and they're used to the cold weather. Um, but would I do uh, John O'Groats to Land's End or Land's End to John O'Groats in sandals? M maybe in the spring and summer, but probably not. Uh, though we did 500 miles in them, but as I say, I think it slowed us down. So probably better to wear some good boots or hike somewhere like Australia or Turkey or Spain where you're more likely to have more clement weather. What a pretty little cemetery. And we've, uh, so it's Gadigal Cemetery. Very pretty. And that is our next little town. So we popped out onto the road. We're going to take a route from Gadigal to, uh, what's the name? Middleton, Middleton, Middleton upon Teesdale. Um, along a B road rather than going over the Fane Mountain, only because we read this morning that firstly, it's, it will add 30 kilometers to our walk. Secondly, people say it can be very poorly marked and extremely windy up on the hill on certain days. Now, whether it would be today or not, we don't know, but we're not trying to champion every section of the Pennine Way. We are trying to walk John O'Groats to Land's End in the most practical way that we can. And for us, if we were writing a book, we want to know what is the best way for people like ourselves of our sort of age group with packs to go. And so we're experimenting. So for those of you that are following, you know, and planning the walk, this is the walk we've got for the next 12 kilometers. It is a B road and it's fairly minor and there's a bit of a hard shoulder to step out onto if you uh, want to avoid oncoming traffic. Uh, not a lot of traffic that I've seen, so it should be quite a nice walk. We've got nearly 13 kilometers of this road, 12, 13 kilometers. And um, yeah, it could be this or fell walking 
through bog and marsh and at the moment oh and an additional 30 k's personally i know if i'm walking 1200 13 1400 miles whatever it ends up being this is where i'd rather be walking A lot of motorbikes come along this route. It's quite a nice drive for bikes. So, just gotta keep your, your wits about you on bends and things. But it's not, uh, I don't think it's a particularly bendy road. So, hopefully it'll be good and safe. I'm probably gonna turn this off now. I don't think it's gonna be much interesting to talk about between here and Middleton. So yes, Michelle and I decided to take a nice little quiet country road today. can't barely feel my hands they're so cold and this is high windy hall 1991 rmp platts and the house here is called high windy and i was just saying to michelle i can think of nowhere nowhere in the world i would rather not live and in a place called High Windy. High Windy Cottages, here they are. No, High Windy Cottage, neither. It just, the two words together. Well, I suppose high can be quite nice, but quite often in, in countries like this means cold. It means basically cold and windy. Not for me, lovely views, but I'd rather have it on a postcard. I mean, it is a beautiful view, isn't it, Michelle? Oh, it's beautiful, absolutely. But I'd say that our house in France, that we used to live in, had equally as beautiful view, maybe not quite as spectacular as this view, but equally as beautiful view, and it wasn't high, <laughs> nor was it windy. <laughs> so there is. That's a nice little uh, view. This is a waterfall. We're about two miles down the road now, and uh, it's a little picnic bench down there. <laughs> We've just taken a picnic stop. I didn't film any of it. Nice little spot, but oh, it's so cold. The sun just doesn't, it refuses to come out today. The weather said it was going to be sunny, and I can barely healed my hands, doing up my shoelaces just now. It was so cold. This is why I choose never and not to live in the United Kingdom. It's, it's only the beginning of autumn and it hasn't given us one tiny inch of a late summer or anything that I would consider to be pleasant weather. Can't be sure what's at the top of this hill, but somebody stopped to walk up there. It's some machinery, could be ski lifts. Can't be sure. Uh, what's this bridge say? Hengill Bridge, rebuilt in 1838. Hard to say, Carl Bell maybe. Just wanna see if there's water here, because we do need water. Do we want to do water here or should we find it later? I just checked on the map because we've been climbing oh, for two hours now and I know at some point we hit the summit and then it's all downhill pretty much and I have a feeling where well, that car is up ahead could be our summit. We're both really kind of looking forward to a little downhill section this uphill climbing can get very tiring and very cold on a day like today plodding on, plodding on. 
Oh, these guys are really deep in mud. <laughs> are they? Yeah. Yeah. I'll turn the camera, you can see. All right, fellas. Hey? No, you can't get lost on this, can you? It's pretty much straight on. I just see you fellas coming out there. That looks pretty hard work. So here come the off-roaders. The whole lunch break. So, off-road bikes, off-road cars. My mother, say hello, mum. Hello. Welcome to Cumbria. Well, goodbye, Cumbria. Michelle and I are now entering County Durham. Durham, I think that's where the Geordies come from, isn't it? A lovely Geordie. I love the Geordie accent, absolutely. So, County Durham, land of the Prince Bishops. And the border of Durham and Cumbria is where I'm gonna come down and get some, uh, some fresh water. So, let's have a look. I think probably up here where the rocks are is a good place to filter some fresh drinking water. We do need some. And uh, this seems a good place Oh, scramble back up. I don't like the look of that water in the, the Pennines. This is the second time I thought about filtering it and it looks bright orange, almost like Tango or oh, Iron Brew, probably more appropriate. But so uh, this time I did run it through the Sawyer filtration and it came through into the bottle still orange. Now for me that means the soy is not really filtering out the particles that it should be. So, I don't know. I don't really want sort of to be drinking straight uh, orange water. Uh, people have told me it's good water in the Pennines, even though it is orange, but I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure what it is that's coloring it and why the soy is not taking that out so i've got a friend who's actually walking the pennine way who knows a little bit more about filtering water than we do and uh, he's also using a, a sawyer so i messaged him he's a he's a couple of days ahead of us a uh, young lad and just see what he thinks because i know he filters a lot of his water anyway by the time you see this it will be a long long way after we finish the walk but i'd be still interested to have your thoughts I suspect I know what a lot of you are going to say. There'll be two very distinct camps. So that was the summit. It was a bit further than we thought. It's uh, we're probably down about 10 meters or so now. I think it's about um, 450 meters in height, uh, whatever that is in feet, somewhere around about the thousand feet, I would say. Anyway, the summit and the highest point and we've crossed over between Cumbria and County Durham and now beautifully it's mostly downhill all the way we've got about oh, 20 kilometers we've only really done about a third of our journey today we've got about 20 kilometers still to do and uh, honestly we haven't, if we haven't seen 200 or more bikes on this walk, I'd be surprised. It's constant, constant bikes. And, um, and cars, of course. Actually, I've picked a particularly Even a boy racer, a hoon. Anyway, so it's downhill. I said I wouldn't film much on this journey there. 
it is beautiful up here and the downhill sections are greatly welcomed i did did hope i could have filmed without too much traffic but it is pretty constant so expect particularly on a weekend that every guy with his midlife crisis between his legs or or every hoon with his little souped up Ford Fiesta is going to be whizzing up here having a whale of time and then getting back home sat down watching Netflix with their pie and chips after a while the only thing I would say is that the sound of motorbikes on this road endless procession of bikes I say we've probably seen 200 or more in the last couple of hours it does get wearing gosh could you imagine living on this road as some of those houses at the early stage you know and it, it's marked on this road be wary there are actually sheep loose on the roadside in that last section and they're still tearing round so Michelle and I just stopped at this little cottage here and it's apparently exactly halfway on our journey which is pretty much what tallies up with my figures and uh South African lad Yuan thank you Yuan for uh topping up our water now his water was just as orange as the stuff that comes off the fells and he says he's been drinking it for some years now and never had any issues so yeah it's just the water up here in this part of the world it comes off of the mountains it's obviously got a little bit of um, coloring in it but it's probably good minerals so Michelle and I feel a little reassured that uh, we can drink it and he gave us some tips about places to stop tonight so we're gonna have a, a rest in the next 20 minutes just to have a bite to eat and just recharge a little bit and then we're gonna have our last sort of press on uh, to find ourselves a place to stop and yes I am dry that's why I need to drink some of this orange water that's unusual little three wheelers three of them I didn't get the camera on I think they're Reliant Robins is that what they're called two orange ones and a white one real Dell boys we've seen everything today haven't we yeah. it is very lovely up here I can imagine as the winter draws in it gets pretty grim as the snow sets in um, but pretty in its own way a couple of people we've spoken to say it is lovely but they kind of wish they were living somewhere a bit less grey um, I think it's what I always used to find about the UK when you're when you're here is the it's not so much the the, the rain and the wind which isn't always about it can be days upon days sometimes months of gray skies and it can feel quite uh, oppressive but uh, moody and quite beautiful and I can see why people never leave and, and, and like to you know have this as their environment and find it very hard to be in warmer climates I think for Michelle and I, it's, uh, it's, it's so many years living in warmer climates that this feels quite harsh. Actually, it's not the temperature. The, the short while I have lived in the UK, it was actually the grey that got to me. Uh, the constant grey, steely grey skies and sort of low pressure. But it is beautiful and the people they're very hardy hardy people particularly up here in the highlands of England <laughs> some ducks down there look uh, regular are they runners no 
Front runners, they're, um, oh, I forget the name of the drake, uh, the ducks, the white ducks like that. So it does get a bit tricky on these bends, but we're gonna stand in. And just wait. Now this little beautiful chapel here, um, so this is on our way towards Middleton on Teesdale and uh, the warden here kindly said he wouldn't mind if we if we pitched down here so that's really nice. I'm just going to have a little film inside if you don't mind. May I just take a little video inside, a little film? Yes, yes, thank you. So here it is. And this was built in 1845. There she is, look at that. Got a beautiful organ. So there goes the church warden, Richard Bell. This chapel, um, which we wondered if we could just have a little rest here, which we are doing. Richard, the warden, has actually said to us, why not set your tent up in here? And he's left us a little heater and electric. He says, no charge anything you want to charge. Or you can camp out on this bit of flat ground out here. So that's kind of the blessing, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? It's very nice, very nice. We look at our damp, wet little tent, dripping with water. But come, if you will, even this look soaked. And yet inside, fully heated. Oh, it's toasty warm in there. Courtesy of this lovely little church. Thank you, Richard. It means a lot to us. We will have as snug as a bug for the first time the tent anyway for a long time. How's the bedroom coming on Michelle? <laughs> Central heating's on. <laughs> Never had it so good have we? That was really nice Richard. Richard. So kind. Very nice. And um, you know if it rains we're out of the rain we can charge our batteries up and we've got a lovely little bench out here in the morning if the weather's nice. Let perpetual light shine upon them. Oh, and we've got some friends. Meh. Hello, you guys. Hello. We have sheep as neighbors and also some sleeping. This is a really, really lucky night. I feel good. Had we realized that the chapel was probably another two kilometers from where we were, we might have walked onto the chapel and it was nowhere near as nice. So fate had it that we were supposed to stay in the church and not the chapel.